Welcome to NinjaCast, a photography podcast powered by Studio Ninja, the world's highest rated business management app built specifically for photographers. Listen and learn as the most successful photographers on the planet share their knowledge to help you transform every element of your photography business. Here's your host, Sally Shaw. Hi guys, welcome to NinjaCast. Today we are joined by the incredible Ben of Chrisman Studios. I'm super excited to have him on the show today and he's going to talk all about his journey in the industry so far and how he now runs a business with multiple associate photographers. So let's get started. Hi Ben, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm really well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a real honor. Thank you. <laughs> so how's things with you? Good, good. We, um, you know, 2020 has been, uh, you know, unlike anything I've ever seen, you know, mm-hmm. like personally, business wise, it's just been a crazy fest from start to finish. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're almost done. You know, we've got two more months. Um, it seems like every year we go, oh, that year really sucked. I can't wait for the next one. <laughs> but 2020 is on another level of that. <laughs> yeah, that's sure. going to go down in history, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Well, how's things kind of in, in terms of um, where you are? Can you tell us a little bit about the COVID situation with you? Yeah, well, we live in a place called Charleston, South Carolina, which is um, it's on the ocean. It's a very tourist friendly town. And we're a town of only like 100,000 something people. We get about 8 million tourists a year. So generally, there's a lot of activity here. There's a lot of energy and churning, um, really good restaurants. So a, lot of, a lot of people come here to go golfing. They go to the beach. Um, they uh there, there's a lot of a lot of activities a lot of tourism things like that mm. so it's basically it shut the city down for a good part of the summer um mm. but this is a historically like a party town people come here it's a very big drinking town we're very social here uh-huh. so they've kind of ramped it up pretty fast um aaron and roxy and i we don't go out to restaurants but i know that they're busy they uh they're at we're at 100 percent capacity with restaurants so it's basically anyone can do whatever they want to here wow. um there's no limits um so it's just it's kind of just your own like personal responsibility of like how how dangerous you want your life to be yeah. at this point but right <laughs> now we're good with edge. covid levels yeah yeah totally um right now we're okay um you know, I, we've, I, you know, I've been tested twice. I did the antibody test, came up negative both times, you know, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm probably higher risk than most people because I'm actually photographing people. Sometimes I have to go into buildings and, you know, I'm around total strangers and, you know, I've sure. been on airplanes. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm usually the da- most dangerous person in the room, <laughs> but <laughs> so far so good. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. I mean, it's it's crazy to kind of hear what's happened on the other side of the world. We're totally different here in the UK. So our restaurants are all closing at 10 p.m. Um, if you're in one of the lower tiers, if you're in one of the higher tiers that are classed as more high risk here, um, we've just had these new tiers um, introduced. And in the top tier, everything's closed, like shops, restaurants, oh, wow. like, yeah. So it's it's crazy to hear like the the other side of the world things are things are going good. <laughs> yeah, well, a, no, we just have a refusal to. Um, we just care more about uh, I think being social than we do about safety. Is the real, <laughs> real issue. Other parts of the country are different. Like when I flew to San Francisco a couple months ago, and it's a completely different vibe. Like there was no one in the city. There was no one in the airport. It was shut down. Mm-hmm. It was almost like the twilight zone. It was like a different. The be- easiest way to describe it, it's like two different species of humans in the United States, one that pay atten- pays attention to the virus and one that doesn't. Uh-huh. And I live in a place where they don't. Um, and sometimes I go to places where they do. And it's very unique. Like we, we fly to New York um, next week and I'm sure it's going to be much more of a different vibe than down here yeah. in South Carolina. Yeah, definitely. I remember um, when we just got into like proper lockdown back in March, April time in the UK and I went out to the supermarket. That was the only reason we were allowed to leave our homes was to go to the shop. Um, and I remember going out and feeling like I was like in one of these like zombie films that I'd watched where the entire population had just been wiped out and it was just yeah. like me against the world. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, 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 it used to feel that way around here too. Now it's pretty wide open. Oh, good, good. I'm glad. So, I mean, for our listeners here that um, may not recognize your face or know um, much about you, Ben, can you tell them a little bit about yourself, your journey, your career so far? 
Sure. Um, my name is Ben Christman. Um, my wife Erin and I own a business called Christman Studios. Um, started around 2005 um, when it was just me, and then I, I met Erin in 2008, and that's when we switched it from Ben Christman Photography to uh, Christman Studios. Mm -hmm. um, that's also about the time where we met Mauricio Adias and um, Aaron Morris and Dave Getchman, and they joined the joined the team. Mm -hmm. um, Dave's now a Buddhist monk, and so he doesn't even shoot anymore. He lives in a wow. monastery in Northern California. And Aaron Morris has his own business in New York City now, but Mauricio's still with us. Um, and we have also got Ryan Zhang and, of course, Vlad, who's been my best friend since I was like 20 years old. And he's a, he works, he does all the filming, the video um, for Christmas Studios. Wow. And um, Ryan lives in San Francisco. Mauricio just moved to Italy where he's uh, engaged um, to um, a beautiful girl named Alice. And Aaron and I are here in Vlad's in Santa Fe. Um, wow, you've got yeah. it all covered. <laughs> <laughs> well, we used to all be basically in one house in San Francisco or in Oakland. And then we kind of life took us. Aaron and I decided we wanted to possibly have a kid and buy a house. So we came to where she grew up in Charleston, where she's close to both of her sets of parents, which mm -hmm. uh, for everyone who has a kid, knowing that their uh, parents are around to help out is everything. So we did yeah. that. And so Aaron and I were uh, based on East Coast. Ryan and Mauricio were still in San Francisco, but then Ra Mauricio fell in love. So he went to Italy. So now we're all, really all over the place. And Vlad's always been in Santa Fe and New Mexico. That's insane. How, how did that all kind of come about? How did you meet all the team? Was it people that you already knew? And then how have you kind of found growing that over the years? Well, Vlad taught me how to shoot when I was 20. He's a couple years older than I am. So he uh -huh. was a newspaper photographer and I was a police reporter my first or second job out of school. And Vlad let me shoot all my own crime scenes for the stories that I would go to. And I built up a kind of a portfolio of, of photography that way. And I ended up getting a job a few months later at the new, our sister newspaper. And then Mauricio and Ryan and Aaron Morris um, all started as interning for us. Um, it was basically just an avenue for them to become, you know, part of the crew. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Mauricio really didn't have any photography experience before he met us. He had never taken a picture before, but we kind of loved him. And he was, he did, um, he's really good at Photoshop and Lightrooming. So we learned that for a few months and then we just sent him off. And now he's been, you know, changing, changing everything ever since then. And he's a wow. super talent. And so same with Dave and Ryan and Aaron. So we've always just, we've, we haven't ever it hasn't been a strategic business decision to say, Hey, we want a bunch of photographers. It was mm. just, we felt so close to those guys that we just kind of always wanted to work with them and be around them. And so we just found ways to kind of make that happen. And it just yeah. happened to be with photography, I guess. That's amazing. And do you feel like that's kind of really taken your business in a direction that like you say, you hadn't necessarily planned? Oh, for sure. It's, it's broadened our reach. A lot of photographers ask, like, you know, say, hey, we want a business like yours. And it probably looks way more like it, it's never, the associates have never been a thing about being profitable. Like we've never really made money off having the associates. Mm -hmm. um, we give almost everything to them because um, we want them to make a good living. Um, but what it, it, what it does is it just, you know, when Mauricio can shoot a wedding in Philadelphia and, and Ryan can shoot a wedding in San Francisco and we can shoot a wedding here in Charleston on any given weekend, that just broadens our our database which is great and so we have a really cool group of clients um i feel like they're the smartest like nicest people in the you know in the world and Aww. so the more people we have like that the better and that's the real kind of advantage i think to having more than just me and aaron Definitely. and we just love working with the guys yeah, they sound amazing i mean there they are in terms of like the day-to-day -day running of that how does that work does everything still filter through you guys and you kind of put that out to them it starts with Erin, my wife. Um, you know, the leads come to her. She kind of books everything. She plans everything before the wedding. On the wedding day, the photographer, whoever it is, shoots it. And then they deal with all the post-production. Like, say, Ryan shoots a wedding. He calls it himself. He lightrooms it himself. Mm -hmm. And then he sends it to me, and I kind of fine-tune it a little bit and put it together. And then I'll give it to the bride and groom. And then I handle all the album design, things like that. So it's no, no matter whether they hire, you know, uh, me or Aaron or Mauricio, they kind of hire all of us in a way because we all have our hands in something, Definitely. some part of the experience. Do you have, I guess you have clients that come to you and say, you know, I want Mauricio or sure. you know, I want this specific photographer because I've seen uh -huh. this gallery they've done and I love it. Uh -huh. And do you, do you ever have situations that arise where that it kind of, it conflicts or they're not free or? Sure. Yeah. It's sometimes like, you know, maybe Mauricio or Ryan would have shot 
a wedding that they were at and they really like that and they want him to be at that wedding for sure. And, you know, normally it, it works out okay. Um, and we've never had any situation where it's like they were mad and they threw a fit and they're like, <laughs> oh, we're not going to hire you. And honestly, we shoot so similarly. It's hard to tell us apart. Um, I can't say that, you know, it, we have our little bit of quirks like, you know, Aaron's going to be a little bit more cleaner. I'm going to be kind of a little bit more artier than that. But Mauricio is going to be the most arty and Ryan's kind of in between me and Ryan. Like uh-huh. it's, but in the grand scheme of wedding photography, it's like, yeah, the separation. Is so small. Like you guys notice the difference, but it's something perhaps that your clients yeah. wouldn't even necessarily right, right. say. Yeah. It's more of a, you know, and I, it, one, one of the reasons we really love Mauricio and Ryan and Aaron Morris and Dave is they were always really good with people. Mm-hmm. And so we can, we know that, the photography is going to be good. That's, we don't worry about that, but we especially know that they're going to be really nice to the couples and the couple's going to fall in love with them. And that's equally as important for yeah. us that they're good with, they're good people, people. Amazing. And in terms of the brand then, so you said that mm-hmm. it, it changed from kind of your name through to Christmas studios mm-hmm. with, with that rebrand, did that bring um, kind of a, a new kind of client? Is there, is there an ideal client that you aim for? Cause you, you know, you say, sure your you know your couples you love them they're the most awesome people in the world what type of couples do you do you aim to attract well it's 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 the same client that i first started shooting when i was in 2005 when i lived in santa fe new mexico i mean that's a really small town as well and like 70 80 thousand mm-hmm. um and there is a local base there but all the people that hired me were from san francisco and new york they were flying in for Des- santa fe is a destination place mm-hmm. it's very beautiful and so those New Yorkers and San Franciscans went home and showed people their photos and then they started hiring me. And that was when it was just me. Mm -hmm. And so it was very, I've never photographed a lot of 22 years old, 20 or two year olds. It's always been late twenties, early thirties, you know, to forties, young professionals. Mm -hmm. Um, The most of the time will pay for their own wedding. Um, and they are just very visually literate. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's always been our client base. And so when we, so when, like I met Aaron and then we got the guys, like I just didn't want my name, my first name, it was too Ben Citrix. Mm-hmm. So that's, so what we did was we polled all our favorite brides and grooms and we gave them a list of names like Christman Creative, Christman Collective, Christman Studios, Christman Photography, blah, blah, blah. And all the bride and grooms that we respected the most said Christman Studios without a doubt. And that's what we've been ever since. And we probably, we will never change that unless it's got a real ring to it. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And it works because especially now, since we're all over the place before we only had one location and now, you know, with, you know, we're in four different places. So Christmas studios like fits perfectly. I don't think it's necessary for all photographers to be named studios, but it works for in our case. Yeah, definitely. And how do you how do you kind of find the the post production side of things mechanically, if you like, or logistically? Do you oh, know? That's that's been a challenge, <laughs> you know, it, because it's hard. You know, you're dealing with you shot journalism, and you're shooting one or you're shooting for one or two pictures, and weddings, you're shooting for hundreds. And so we've gone through a lot of different phases. In the beginning, basically, when Mauricio and and Aaron Moore started, they did all our Lightrooming. And I basically said, okay, I don't care how you do it, but make all 800 photos look like what you see on our blog. And they, I was kind of joking, kind of not, but they took it very seriously. So they did it really well. Like they, it, they would spend, they'd take all week doing it um, because this was 10 years ago in Lightroom, you know, more beginning phases of Lightroom. Yeah. And um, so they handled it in the beginning. And then we get, and then we got so busy, we were shooting so many weddings a year that we were working seven days a week nonstop doing Lightrooming, which is kind of hard to manage. So I took that away from us and we gave it to Image Salon and Image Salon did it for years and years and years and years. And they're amazing at it. And then when everyone started like it moved into different places, it was hard dealing with hard drives. So the guys took it back and they started doing their own. And now like it works out great because, you know, we're not shooting as many weddings as we were in like 15 or 2011 to 16, mm-hmm. especially this year, like weddings are been pushed or canceled completely. So we have, we have more time to do it. I mean, I still don't do it. I still give it to a retoucher named Matt. He was amazing. He, he's here in Charleston, but the guys do their own now. Amazing. It sounds like you've got the real dream team. <laughs> I'm, I'm super proud of our guys. You know, I, 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 they're, they're amazing. I think looking through your website as well, they really, um, 
they really feel like part of the brand. They really feel like part of, you know, Chrisman Studios. It's not a case of... Oh, they are the brand. I mean, they're you know as much I mean? of it as we are. Yeah, yeah. like it's... it's uh, Some companies out there, I think you can look and you can say, well, very evidently, you know, this person owns the business and this person is the founder. And then they've just got a ton of associates. But it feels really different with you. It feels like they they feed into it so heavily that the entire business is about all of you. Oh, a hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. We don't really make a decision without talking to them and they're equal. I mean, we're not priced any differently. We're all the same price. Like everything's when you hire one of us, I mean, you're going to get the same level. Yeah. I mean, across the board. So yeah, there's really no separation and we're all like, and again, because you know, Aaron and I, it's not like a money maker. We're not trying to make money off the guys. It's like a family yeah. thing where we, if we do better, they do better and vice versa. Yeah, and you definitely get that feel, 100%. All right, cool. That's awesome. <laughs> so in terms of the images that you guys create, I mean, is there? do you find that there's any creative differences between hiring you or any one of your associates? No. Mm -mm. We might have a, like a little bit of, you know, yeah, it's uh, Mauricio is probably going to shoot through objects a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, Aaron's probably going to be able to touch on the emotion a little bit more. Um, Ryan or, or Niagara would probably be in the middle a little bit, but it's such minute things that it's yes. like the average bride and groom are probably, they're either going to say, oh, I really like that, or that is not at all what I want for my wedding. <laughs> it's, you know, we're very, very niche like that. Absolutely. So in terms of the creative side of things then, I mean, your shots are incredible. And as you say, you know, I look through your website and I don't know what's been shot by who. Um, but the gallery, every single image is, is, is really powerful. It's really striking. It's emotive, but then your portraits are epic. They're ridiculous. <laughs> Do you have any kind of tips for photographers that are really looking to hone those skills to be more creative, to bring kind of a different look to their images? Sure. I mean, I think the, just from a, the obvious thing is people tend to take portraits in the same distance that they take everything else, which is five to 10 feet away. So you really got to break that cycle and you can't be afraid to get really close and to own that. And when I say get close, I mean like minimal focal distance. So like if you're going to photograph a kiss, like get them cut out their eyes off and it's just lips and like you feel it, like you're mm -hmm. in there and you can't be scared to be really far away to the point where you've got to give the couple enough confidence to say, okay, run with this for five minutes and just be yourselves, you know, make out with each other, flirt with her, you know, because you can put couple in the perfect situation, but if they're not feeling, if they're just staring at themselves blankly, it's going to suck. It's <laughs> not, it's not going to translate. And, and so I always tell them, if you fake it, the camera's going to tell you fake it. So don't fake it. Just mm -hmm. you're in love. You just got married. Like do whatever you want. This is yeah. no rules here. And so you're just kind of basically sometimes I've, I've never liked landscape photography. I've never been a landscape photographer, but in some ways we are landscape photographers. We're just sticking people in holes in landscapes. Mm -hmm. And, and, but the point, the, the kind of the important part is you've got to get the couple to feel something in that moment. Otherwise it falls flat and it's just a boring, you know, gimmicky picture. Do you find that there's some work from you there to, you know, I, I think as easy as it is to say to a couple, you do you, you know, you've just mm -hmm. got married, be in love. I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of work potentially from you that comes before that to give them that comfort and let their guard down to be able to do that. Well, as a photographer, you can't have any insecurities because if you hold those insecurities, people are going to feel them. Mm -hmm. And so you have just got to like completely get past yourself and like not worry about looking like an idiot in every way. And the kind of the more that you look like an idiot, the more loose they get because they don't care. And so that's step one. You've got to start. It's got to start within you to like feel that kind of genuine honesty. And you've actually got to care about them because if you don't care about them, you're not going to take good pictures. Like, so before a wedding, we, we always like think, and I always assume that I'm going to know this couple for the rest of my life. And if I do that, if I'm going to be their friend, you instinctively, you know, intuitively, you're not going to screw them over. You're not going to half-ass anything. You're not going to kind of do the best job you can. You're just going to do the best job you can because you photograph them the same way you would a best friend. Yeah. You're um, interested in them. Yeah. And so it starts there. And then if the couple's really uptight, then you can ask them some questions like say, what's, what's one thing you love about that person that they don't realize about themselves? Or you can, you can kind of bring that 
emotion out because any good portrait photographer like Avedon or those guys, they just don't sit them in front of there. They're trying to bring something out of them that is not instinctively on the surface. Mm -hmm. And that's part of our job is to dig deep. Like I'm always trying to photograph people from the inside out, not the outside in. Mm -hmm. So to do that, you've got to dig a little bit. It's like a journalist. If writing a story, if you're trying to write a story on someone, you can't look at them and write a story. You've got to ask them questions. Same way with photography. You've got to start, you've got to dig a little bit to kind of bring things up. And that's where it's, that's what it's about. That's amazing advice. I really, I, I, you know, I've never thought of it like that, that you, you know, I think as, as photographers, we often think of it just as, I don't know, prompts or, Mm -hmm. you know, just things that are going to evoke a reaction that we've kind of, um, not set up, but you know, Mm -hmm. it didn't, it didn't happen candidly or naturally. Um, but I think to look at it that way that you're digging a little bit deeper for them to come out of it themselves is a really great way to look at it. Yeah. And they're going to remember those feelings as much as they're going to remember like what it looks like. Um, because art is about feeling. If you don't feel anything, it could be the most technically perfect photo in the world, but it's going to fall flat. Um, it's got, people have to like remember something about it, like a song, you know, it might not be the best song ever written, but you, you remember it as that song is a part of your life. And that, that feeling is what matters. Um, that's all good art, what good good art is. And do you find that you look for um, specific things when you are photographing couples? Is there kind of a, in your head, do you find that you're going to the same places each time? Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I generally have a pretty limited color palette that I like. I like pretty strong colors, um, pretty primaries. So I feel like art is always about subtraction. And so many photographers will spend their lives not really knowing what they really find or what they really love. And as soon as you kind of can narrow that down to things you really like, then finding those things is a lot easier because you know what you're looking for. So when I first started shooting weddings, like I looked at all my heroes work, like Nakwe and Harvey and Parr and all those, you know, sound man and all, all those photographers I loved. I looked at their books. I said, okay, I like this about them. Or I like this shadow. I like this reflection. I like this silhouette. I liked all these, a lot of kind of quirky things. And then I just applied it to my wedding photography. Mm-hmm. Like I like the really strong colors of Alex Webb. So I'm always shooting color like, Alex trying to shoot saturated like chrome mm. and then for black and white, I'm trying to shoot that kind of gritty chalky black and white, like a knock way. Mm-hmm. And so I've always had a very clear path of what I find cool about photography. Mm. And so I just redoing that. It doesn't mean it's easy because even though when you know how to take a good photo, there's still so many steps to get there. Mm. You just have a standard of saying, this is where I want to be and I'm not going to stop until I get to the top. Mm-hmm. And then you start all over again with the next photo. Definitely. I mean, for people out there that, you know, they hear you and they go a hundred percent, I need, I need to put that into practice. How would you say that they can start that process of finding what they love? It's most, most good photos that you're proud of that you put on your blog that go in your portfolio. Don't just happen there. If they just happen, they're usually a moment that you can't replicate. Mm. So I always compare it to climbing a ladder. You start with one idea and that's one step. So say a bride's getting ready, you walk around her and you, the light's flat, right? So you say, okay, I'll use off camera flash. And then, so that's step one. And then you're like, okay, well, that's kind of boring. I'm not getting anything interesting. So you find a, a mirror. Okay, step two. And then, so you've got off camera flash and then you shoot in your reflection. And then you wait for the, the makeup artist's hand to like perfectly go in front, that's step three. And then, you've got to, if the bride's not smiling, she's probably not going to like it and you're not. So you've got to wait for a moment. You've got to wait for her to smile. That's step four. Mm -hmm. And so some photos have different heights of ladders. So some ladders might be two or three rings and some might be 20. And then when you get there and when you stop, when like literally nothing has happened anymore, then you fall off the ladder and you start all over and you do it again. Mm -hmm. The only time this isn't possible is like when the really important moments are happening, like, you know, when the bride's walking up the aisle or the first kiss, things like that, you can't screw up, but there are basically only like four or five photos at a wedding. You absolutely have to get like first kiss, first dance, processional, recessional, all that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, Mom and mom and daughter portrait. 
Mm-hmm. After that, you're pretty much coasting and you can do whatever you want. And a lot of times wedding photographers don't give themselves the creative freedom to take chances mm-hmm. because beyond those few necessary photos, they're going to be happy with whatever you get. But wedding photographers get so used to taking just like 800 okay photos that they don't take the time to take eight really good ones on top of the 800 okay yeah. ones. And that's the real difference is giving yourself the ability and mental freedom to do that. But you've got to know what you like before you even think to do that. A hundred percent. Right. Yeah. I think, I, do you know, I think having not shot weddings this year, really, I mean, I, sh- I shot one in January. I'm due to shoot one on Friday this week. Um, and that is me done for this year. Like everything else has bumped into next year and the year after. And I think having that time away has given me the chance to kind of reflect and think, what do I want to do differently next year? What, you know, what wasn't I doing enough of? What did I love that I want to carry on and do more of? And I think having that time to evaluate everything is really helpful, isn't it? Sure. It makes you appreciate them too, way more. Yeah. Like they're fun. Weddings are fun and they're generally pretty easy. As long as you can handle the stress, then they're easy. They're, I mean, cause everything's like perfectly laid out for you all day long. <laughs> you never have a dull second, basically. Um, I mean, journalism's hard. Weddings are easy in comparison. Yeah. Do you find that your, your kind of journalism background has molded the way you see weddings and 100%. the way you see images and what you see uh, just in front of you? Totally. Yeah, totally. I don't ever think that I'm shooting like a wedding photographer. And if I do, I'm, I need to break out of that cycle um that mentality because what you do is it it confines you and you're not you stop being creative Mm. um if you're just trying to take photos people expect instead of challenging yourself and to take photos that are that you like as well and with weddings that's not always possible but say you get one good photo a wedding that you're proud of that's really good i'm I'm lucky if i get one good photo a year that i'm really proud of like super proud of um and journalism, the journalists will spend two or three months and get five photos they like. So for a photographer to come out of a one wedding and think they're going to have 40 or 50 photos that are going to last the rest of their lives, it's not going to happen, mm. which is fine. Um, you get one, you're rolling. Because yeah. people, the bride and groom are going to probably like everything you shoot unless you're just really, you know, if you don't care, then that will show. Yeah. As long as you care, I think the karma will lead to you getting photos that you like and you gotta you gotta will it to happen you gotta believe it's gonna happen and you gotta like pray the photo god and say please let them smile right now or (laughs) (laughs) so let something happen and then you go from there yeah it's a lot of patience isn't it you know i think Mm -hmm. especially when photographers first come into the industry i remember it so well like the first wedding i ever shot and i was thinking oh my god i need to shoot everything like if i'm not shooting they're gonna think that i'm not Mm -hmm. i'm not doing a good job and I look back at that now and I'm like, oh, how naive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think, yeah, I think it's waiting for that shot, mm-hmm. waiting for it, that perfect moment. Yeah. And it, I, I feel that pressure too, though, and uh, to always shoot. And so I kind of feel like it builds momentum, though. So I generally don't stop shooting. I'm just trying to build another picture after that because I feel like if I shut down, I'm like, okay, they're really not doing anything. It breaks the flow. And so I try to keep thinking, at least I'm thinking, I'm looking, I'm, I'm, try, I'm shoot, putting something in front of my camera, at least creatively, you know, I'm trying not to stop the momentum yeah. all day long. In terms of techniques that you use, Ben, when you say you're putting things in front of your camera, you're always, you, you know, your create, creative juices are always flowing. Can you give us maybe a few hints or tips on what type of things you're using yeah it. most of it's found you know i'll go into the hotel and i'll find the little liquor bottles in the refrigerator because they're you know like tank ray is light blue or something or i'll find something from the makeup artist thing um let's see where's my little bag um i don't know here one second no problem so I have this little bag of like a couple things. Like one thing I really like is this copper ring. Uh-huh. That's pretty cool because what you can do is bounce like through there and it's like little ringlets. Uh-huh. That's pretty neat. Um, I have an old beat up UV filter that I'll use to like, put, if I want to reflect clouds onto it, I have this little $6 
mirror from Amazon so I don't have to shoot off my phone. Uh -huh. And um, there's twinkly, I have little Christmas twinkly lights that I probably use way too yeah. much, but I like them, so I just keep using them. Um, and that's basically my bag of tricks. That's all I got. Um, or I I've, uh, unless I find something in, in the wedding. Um, Mauricio to... shoots through chairs all the time. He's never found a chair he won't shoot through. <laughs> um, so it's different for all of us. That's amazing. So with, with those kind of your little kit of tricks, if you like, uh -huh. do you find that you're creating with each of them at most of your weddings? Um, generally, to some extent, and it's generally just for the portraits. I don't do it with moments. Um, it's just if I, I know what people expect out of us and they're expecting something abstract, you don't hire us to have just super straightforward all day long. Yeah, yeah. So if I'm not, I mean, sometimes we're in situations where you don't need that. And some situations I feel like I do. And say like there's a wedding that we shot in Charleston a couple of weeks ago and the groom found this cool hallway and it was like, like broken bricks and it was pretty neat. And so like I did one shot that was just super straightforward with all camera flash. And then one, I used the twinkly lights and I gave them both and it's up to them. We didn't, we used the straightforward one on the blog. We didn't use the twinkly lights one, but it gives people options. And it also like, I'm always in the, theory that I'll edit myself later. I don't like to critique myself when I'm shooting. I don't look in the back of the camera. I don't chimp um, unless to check the exposure, but with mirrorless, you see the exposure now anyway. Um, because I feel like if I, if I shut myself down in the process of it, which I feel like there's a couple types of photographers. There's a type that love the process of taking the picture and there are photographers who love the results. The result people generally like tweak you know, tinkering in Photoshop and the process people don't like doing that. They like tinkering in the, the act mm -hmm. and I like tinkering in the act. But if I start condemning myself and saying, oh shit, th then this isn't work. This looks bad. Yeah. I start getting defensive and like I, I mentally I'm not positive and I have to be positive when I'm shooting all the time. So Definitely. I just don't critique myself. I'll do it I with that, that later. That kind of like shuts down the the creative flow as mm -hmm. well, doesn't it? I would imagine, you know, when you're thinking, oh my God, like this is going to look sure. amazing. I know exactly how this is going to turn out. You shoot it, you look at the back of the camera and you go, that's nothing like I wanted it to be. It kind yeah. of pulls you down straight away. Oh, yeah. And I never think, oh, this is going to be amazing. I think, I hope I get it in focus. Like, that's all I, that's my standard. <laughs> like, get it in focus, I'm good. Um, it doesn't matter what's in focus. As long as something's in focus in the picture, generally, <laughs> so it, you can say it works. Um, so that's the thumb I'm trying for. That's like the top tip of the interview. I love <laughs> it. As long as something's in focus, you're all good. <laughs> <laughs> right, you can say, oh, I meant to focus on that. <laughs> that's amazing. So, I mean, in terms of your business, mm -hmm. it's, running like wildfire your team are incredible your couples are amazing your images are insane do you do you ever kind of take a step back and think you know what did we do to get to here have you ever kind of evaluated you know this marketing particular avenue that we took worked really well or um you know this particular blog post or this wedding really catapulted things for us you know, honestly, I've never done marketing before COVID. Now we do marketing. Now we have an SEO guy. Now we actively do email campaigns. Now we're actually having to run a business like we should have been running it for years and years. We just never had to before COVID. Now yeah. it's changed. I mean, that's why I not, don't want to teach right now because I don't feel like anyone knows what they're talking about. If they're saying like, this is the way out of COVID with this yeah. work, I, don't, I think they're just lying. You're um, <laughs> yeah, and you know, Honestly, the business is not flying right now because of COVID. Like mm -hmm. our whole, like all the weddings are gone. Um, mm -hmm. So we are shooting a lot more families now, um, doing things to supplement when, you know, what is October? September, October should be the two busiest months of the year for us. Mm -hmm. And they're only we think we've shot two weddings, um, uh, one in San Francisco and then one in Charleston and I guess one in New York next week. So we'll have three. Um, but we've just been photographing a lot of family sessions here locally, trying to stay like live you know kind of you know like kind of the dream where you like live as cheap as you can and just shoot the things that you want I mean that's kind of where we're at right now and I mean next year September October is going to be crazy um I mean nuts that's that's what we're getting calls for mm -hmm. um I'd be lying if saying hey we're we're crushing it Ralph. we can't shoot much mm -hmm. I mean partly out of our own fear of being in front of 
lots of people. Mm -hmm. And partly because our clients are not the people having big weddings right now. Our mm-hmm. clients are the ones shut down in their apartments in New York City, refusing to go outside because mm-hmm. they're scared of COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, I think other photographers' clients maybe have a client base that is a little bit more open <laughs> to, go, to doing things right now. Ours aren't those people. Mm-hmm. Um, what we did right though was the whole time as we, we worked our asses off. We used to, we basically lived in one house in Oakland and we worked seven days a week all day long. We partied really hard at night and we woke up at, you know, and started working at nine in the morning. We we're always together. And then, you know, we'd all shoot a wedding on Saturday and we'd all meet up in the kitchen at midnight and we'd drink till four in the morning and talk mm-hmm. about it. And then we go back to work the next day. Um, and so that's, that was the secret. Wedding and, photographers get to do. I love that. <laughs> yeah. And also Aaron and I had kids like later. So we, you know, I was 39, I think when we had Roxy. So I spent my entire twenties and thirties just working nonstop where a lot of people had families and they had obligations that would slow them down. Aaron and I worked for seven, you know, every day for years, for yeah. 10 years. And, uh, I think that was a big thing and also never felt like work because we loved doing it so much um and that's we were, that was just luck straight up luck we had no i had no business plan never had a business plan never done a budget we just roll mm-hmm. and see what happens so in terms of um you say that you didn't market before covid how did mm-hmm. you how do you find that most of your weddings come through to you is it recommendations Girls. yeah referrals yeah. and we are more a little bit more locally based with san francisco so Besides, I mean, we have, we've shot in 30 countries in 33 different states, but a lot of, a percentage of our weddings were always Napa, um, that part of San Francisco. So a lot of this, are, you know, Ryan, Mauricio, Aaron, Dave would shoot up there and then Aaron would, be, and I might've been on the road a little bit more, but people just referred us over the years. And that's generally how we get most of our weddings. Now it's very rare that we go to a wedding where we don't know somebody. Yeah. Um, it's like meeting up with old friends all the time, I guess. Isn't oh, it? totally. Yeah, for sure. And now with families, we're mostly photographing our clients' kids, and which is great because we're kind of like growing up with them. Um, the whole almost time. every yeah, when we go to New York, and we're photographing several families before the wedding. Every single one is a past client, and most of them we photographed before. So it's a, if any wedding photographer that wants business right now, just go send an email to all your past clients and say, hey, let's do a family session because it's yeah. they're a lot less expensive than a wedding, and um, you can make more with them if you do. You know, if you offer artwork, you offer albums, um, but they're also just really fun. Definitely. So, I mean, you touched on it there briefly. Um, in terms of offering things to your clients after the day, I know there's um, a lot of photographers out there that, you know, not necessarily shoot and burn, but, you know, they'll shoot the wedding, they'll edit them, they'll send their um, online gallery to their client, and that's it. Do you, obviously, you guys work a little bit differently to that, that you have kind of tangible things that you sell after the the wedding as well so what would yeah. you remember the biggest thing is the album pre-design i always design an album maxed out at 100 you know graphics limits are we use graphic studios for wall art and albums and it's limited to either 100 page for the wedding book or 110 for the young book or the thinner page and so i always max it out and i always design the album that if it was my wedding what would i want mm-hmm. and then when i we show them the photos and we say hey look this is I have 150 photos in this book. There are another 600 more. Um, if it's going to be hard to, for you just to make it less pages than this. So if you at least just stay within, you know, if you stay at this number of pages, which is 100, 110, I'll give you 25% off of the whole book. Mm-hmm. You know, if you drop below that, then it, the normal price goes back into play. Um, but I at least want to give you an option to get a discount on something that I would want if I were you. Yeah. And usually people will go for that. And if they can't afford it, they can't afford it. And that's okay. They'll drop it to, you know, 20 pages, 30 pages, whatever it was in the beginning. But, you know, you've, you've got to make money, but you've got to, you've got to offer, you've got to, you've got to do the right thing first. Mm. And that's, that's the best way to, if you need to make money after the wedding is to offer, you know, at least show them what's possible with an album. And then I have a dream of, I need to make one for me and Aaron of like a big 40, 40, that's a, a collage, um, with, and I did it for clients last year in New York and they ordered two 40 by forties and we did a hundred photos on each one as wow. a collage so one was the getting ready ceremony and one was the reception and they put it in their hallway. So every time someone walks in their house, they look at their wedding from start to finish. And it's so cool. It's cool. Almost as cool as an album because like 
it, you live with your wedding every single day and that's got to do great things for your relationship. If you're reminded like how much you, you know, your vows and how much you really love that person that day. That's Definitely. awesome. I love that. That's a, a really great tip. Thank you. So if you could start your career over again, Ben, is there anything mm -hmm. that you'd do differently? I probably would have tried to take um, business classes in college, which I didn't. Mm -hmm. um, I probably would have tried to do a better job with creating a database. Like we've always used Tave and they, you know, the database is important and with, with you, your database as well. Like as long as photographers have a really strong database, that's mm -hmm. crucial because that's where you can market to your past clients. Um, mm -hmm. And most photographers tend to just forget about their past clients. And, you know, Steve, our business coach always said, there's three ways to grow a business. Um, you know, get people to use you more often, get new clients and get people to spend more money with you. The hardest one is to get new clients. Mm. So if you can remarket to the people who already love you, you're going to like, you're going to, you know, it's going to be so much easier for you to, to stay in your business because most wedding photographers don't make it. They make it three to five years and then they're, they bounce. Yeah. They go into graphic design or they go into real estate. They go into whatever. Um, photography's hard, man. Um, I knew I knew I would never be rich being a photographer. That was never a priority. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can just do well, but you know, and survive and give your kids good education, because the cool thing about photography is what we do is going to last hundreds of years. Not many jobs you can say will do that, right? Yeah. Um, it's a gift. It's really cool. It's a gift for yourself. It's a gift for them. Um, I can't imagine doing anything else. I, I couldn't do anything else. I, I'd have to like, I'd have to work at McDonald's or something. I literally <laughs> have no more talents. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I, I totally get you there. You know, images do last a lifetime, don't they? I'm, I'm more, you know, several lifetimes for several different generations. I know mm -hmm. when, um, we got married in December, um, my husband's auntie and uncle were there. Mm -hmm. and his uncle was like the life and soul of the party he was in the middle of the dance floor the whole evening he was absolutely loving it um and a month later he died like sure. yeah. it was nuts like nobody saw it coming at all and the pictures from our wedding day now are some of our best loved photos of him like he was sure. having the time of his life um and you know i think giving that to every couple that you meet you know especially you know you walk into weddings and there is um, you know, elderly family members there that, you know, might not be with them in 10, 20 years time. Mm -hmm. sure. I, you know, as a photographer myself, I make a point of making sure that I get some really awesome portraits or just natural moments of all of sure. those people. Yeah. You take it for granted. I mean, I know for, from our wedding, like we approach each wedding with kind of the memory of that like our dj marcus he passed away really young at 30. um he was one of our best friends um and also like i also think about like our bookkeeper phyllis and anton came in from san francisco and they were guests and one thing that she told me after the wedding was she felt very invisible because she's older 65 70. and so our photographers didn't take that many photos of her because she wasn't out on the dance floor she wasn't being crazy like the rest of us and that's always stuck with me so one thing aaron and i always do now is when even though when the dance party's going nuts, we go around, we photograph everyone sitting at the table just so they know that they're being seen and that the couple has a memory of them being there because otherwise it's very easy to overlook people that aren't, you know, jumping up and down. Not um, everyone's the party animal that wants to no, be right in the middle totally. of the dance floor, are they? So. Uh, absolutely. So if you can go through, you know, the, the photography, you, you add life lessons and you apply them to how you take pictures. So my photography, you know, 20 years ago is a little bit different than it is now and it'll be different mm -hmm. 20 years from now. Um, but that's a cool thing. You evolve and you, and you, hopefully you get better. Hopefully you don't peak at 30, like a basketball player. Um, <laughs> and you continue to like really kind of put your energy and in, in your passion and you love for people into that. I don't think you can be a good wedding photographer or not like love people. to begin Yeah. With. I think, I think to be a good wedding photographer, you've got to love weddings. You've got to love everything that a wedding entails, mm -hmm. haven't you? Because it's, like you say, it's tough. You know, it's not an easy career path to take. Right. And I yeah. Think, and, sorry, go ahead. Go no, ahead. no, you're okay. And I, I, like, I just think that, you know, people that come into weddings and as you say, they, they you know, they bail three, five years in, mm -hmm. they don't truly love it. They don't have that passion for it. Mm hmm yeah, and I, I can't say that I really love the pageantry of weddings. I'm not the biggest wedding person in the world. I love people first. And to me, wedding is like a really good documentary project that I like shooting every Saturday. Yeah. So I approach it like telling a story, not like, 
oh my God, I'm so excited. She's got the dress of her dreams. That's cool. <laughs> I'm more interested in his reaction when he sees her for the first time yeah. than the dress. Like I always, I always think the dress looks better on the girl than on the wall. Mm -hmm. um, and because I like the personal aspect of it and that's just an instinctive thing with me, but I'm not like the biggest wedding guy in the world. I don't, but I love people. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So if you could have perhaps one final piece of advice, maybe something that's made a big difference to your personal life or your business life, what would that piece of advice be? Surround yourself with good people that, that aren't selfish. Um, and to get rid of those relationships that are just a uh, trouble where you have a relationship or have a friendship where it's always stressful and they just bring you down all the time, mm -hmm. dump it. Life is too short for those people. Found, surround yourself by people that you're inspired by, who are creative. It's the relationship's easy. You don't have, it's not a stressful like fight, you know, it's like, you know, have dinner and then the energy's weird. Just don't go to dinner with them anymore. Mm -hmm. Go to dinner with people you have fun with um, because, you know, it's, it's, it flies by too fast. And that creative, that positive energy makes you a better person. And so that would be my advice and hire a bookkeeper for sure. Get a, book, get a bookkeeper and don't, don't do QuickBooks on your own. <laughs> I love that. That's, that's amazing. I love that there's like a real deep emotional connection and then get someone to do your accounts. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so perhaps if our listeners would like to find out some more about you, get in touch with you, how can they do that? Well, we're an open book. I mean, christmasstudios.com. I mean, literally our email's on there. My cell phone's on that website. <laughs> like we're, we're very, very easy to uh, find and access. We've even got a live chat on our website now where you can just go and like, it's literally, you know, me and my office and Aaron and hers, and we're just talking to people all day and it's, it's really fun. Um, especially with COVID right now, having the live chat has been great because people are talking to us about their weddings where they might be too scared to email, but now I'm just like getting, you know, yeah. hearing all about it. So that, that, that's another great feature is having a live chat up. Like that's another thing I would recommend. <laughs> that's amazing. Fantastic. Well, I literally cannot thank you enough, Ben. It has been thank you. So a fun. pleasure chatting with you. You've given so much insight and knowledge and I'm truly inspired. So I know that all of our listeners will be. So thank you so much. Oh, cool, thanks. Please send me your link to your wedding photos. I want to see your wedding. <laughs> I will do. <laughs> all right, cool. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Ben. I'll see you soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. -bye. Okay, guys, that's everything from me today. Thank you so much to Ben for joining us. I literally don't even know where to begin with the amount of knowledge that he shared with us in just one small chat. If you'd like to see more or look at the show notes, you can head over to www.studioninja.co forward slash episode 15. Please don't forget to rate us on the platform that you're listening on. A little bit of love goes a very long way. I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of NinjaCast, brought to you by Studio Ninja. Beautifully designed and super easy to use, Studio Ninja will help you manage your leads, clients, shoots, invoices, contracts, workflows, and so much more. To learn more or start your 30-day free trial, go to www.studioninja.co.